Hello everyone. Welcome to this edition of Puzzle Talk. I am your host, Erin O'Brien, your hostess, hostess Twinkie. Uh, screens doing things that are confusing me, but cheers. Okay, before I, yeah, hostess. I wanted to say a note about host, hostess. We just are supposed to say host now, but sometimes I, I go back to the old words. And hostess, back in the day, the hostess of a dinner party or cocktail party used to wear something called a hostess skirt. And it was like a long, sometimes it would be like a brocade, like a formal skirt, and she'd wear a fancy blouse. So she would never have on the same outfit as her guests. I am not wearing a hostess skirt. Uh, I'm going to just go into my usual disclaimer. As you know, this is a utility grade, utility grade operation. I'm just a, I, I'm a mick, I'm a kraut, I'm hunky, whatever you want to call me. I'm an immigrant, I, you know, I'm all immigrant on that side. It's just, and I come on here and I talk about puzzles. I've been talking about puzzles now for, this will be the fifth Fifth, pu fifth Puzzle Talk edition, and I figured it's going to be the last one. And I've been hinting about uh, the spring co the spring box controversy. I've been talking about that a lot, and it's time to just talk about it. But before we do that, I always like to show you the puzzle I'm working on now. And I have been working on a puzzle I bought at the thrift store. It is beautiful Museum Collection Clementoni. And I'm here in Cleveland. I'm in Cleveland, and there's three inches of snow, and it's freezing in the middle of April, so you have to do something, so you do a beautiful artwork puzzle. Little note on this when you do this kind of a puzzle. Uh, maybe you do the border first. I do. And then the obvious the way to do this is you do it by color. And so when you're working this by Van Gogh, by Van Gogh, uh, you're working this puzzle, you select it by colors, and just like I imagine that he painted it, right? So he probably, you know, mixed that red for those poppies and whatnot, and so when you construct it, it it's just, uh, you get very, very close to the artist's color palettes, brush strokes, what have you. Working this Van Gogh, it's a lot of fun. Boppers out there who were in with me last week whenever I was belly aching about, I don't know what, hold on, yes, wait, shitty vodka with whatever. And I said, I showed you the puzzle I was working on then, that puzzle. I have an update on that puzzle. Excuse me. That puzzle was another Van Gogh called The Harvest that I bought for a dollar or something, and it, it actually was missing a few pieces. It was this great vintage Springbok but then again, you know, I think Van Gogh didn't have an ear or something. So that makes perfect sense that this puzzle would, it, it's fine. It's fine. It was a great puzzle. It was an old vintage Springbok. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about a vintage Springbok puzzle. And there's a lot to be said about this. And somebody's got to say it. And it's going to be me. All right. We're going back to the year 1963. Going back to the year 1963, were two individuals by the name of Robert and Katie Lewin, I hope I am saying that right, inspired by some English puzzles that were called Waddington puzzles. I don't know anything about them. Uh, they loved these Waddington puzzles. The Waddington puzzles were often round puzzles. I don't know what the images were. I don't know anything about them. All I know is that Katie and Robert were inspired by these English puzzles and decided to launch a puzzle company in the United States and call it Springbok. Springbok for the like deer-like, gazelle-like animal, uh, which you are going to see a depiction of very shortly. All right. First puzzle I'm going to show you is... It, I think there was four of these in the series, and mine is by an artist. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, and if I'm not, you know what? So what are you going to do? I can't, I'm sorry. I don't know how to say it. I can't figure it out. The internet machine didn't show me what to do, so I, I'm just going to say it as best I can. Frank Kupka, C-U-P-K-A. Um, 
This artwork is called uh, The Discs of Newton, and the description on the box is a receding vortex of swirling color or a rising cone of color. And these puzzles completely revolutionized what was heretofore, uh, you know, just the simple parlor diversion. And here is my Kupka. Okay. But I want to show you what's inside this box. So this box is like really beefy. There's commentary. Hey, I know. I know that this is backwards. I cannot figure it out. Okay. So just try to figure it out reading backwards. I'll read it to you. Whatever. A receding vortex of swirling color or a rising cone of color. And so this is Springbok Editions. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show you what this inside this box. All right, so it's two boxes. On one side, these came with a guide poster of the image. I don't remember. I, I, I don't know what I paid for this. I don't remember. I had to get two of these to get a complete one. And then you have the actual puzzle in here. Did you just discover, did you just, did you just discover something about me that I don't completely uh, deconstruct the puzzle when it goes back in the box? Maybe you did. Maybe you did. Maybe that's what happens. In any event. So these were really, they were these, this modern art. And then on the back of the box, this is a, like a real collector's item if you like this stuff. Okay. They would, there's commentary on the back of these spring box. And this, I'm, I'm not going to read a lot because, frankly, you'll lay over, you'll lay down on the ground and you'll die if I read this whole thing. Because let me just give you a, a taste of what, how serious they took this. Uh, the intellectual analysis of still life or portrait forms in early cubism were nearly always painted in a near monochrome, monochrome beige or gray. As the movement gained followers in the years 1911 through 1913, the original intent of of Picasso and Brock was altered by the new, newer Cubists who formed splinter groups. They took this shit seriously, okay? And at once, puzzles became accessible, sophisticated artwork, okay? This series with the dual box, I think there was four. I can only find a, a couple of them. One was called, uh, all right, where do I have it? One was called... Carnival of Harlequin by Jane by Joan Miro, which I just saw one for ninety dollars on eBay. I did not buy it, because, but man, did I love it! And the other one, and the one that really broke barriers, was called Convergence by Jackson Pollock. Okay, so it just it was a game changer. And what happened? All right, hold on. Katie Lewin was quoted as saying, let me see if I let me see if I can get the quote right. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. No problem. I'll just I'll just reference my jigsaw puzzles, an illustrated history and price guide volume to get the quote exactly right about that Pollock puzzle. You understand a Jackson Pollock better after you have made the puzzle. That's what Lewin said about this. Okay, so they start making these puzzles and they start doing a lot of round puzzles. Um, in 1965, uh, there was a whole bunch of them. I, I couldn't show you all these puzzles in a million years, not the ones that I have. If you go online, you could look at images. I'm going to give you a sampling of these incredibly beautiful Springbok puzzles, uh, these round ones, and then a few of the later ones. Okay, I'm going to start with this one. Now this image, this pl uh, this plate of seven color enamel on white porcelain dates from the Kang Kangxi period, sixteen sixty two through seventeen twenty two of China. So this image was on a plate, okay. And let me, I just want to show you uh, some of the, uh, a couple of pieces from a Springbok puzzle. All right. These have what we call irregular die cuts, okay? And puzzlers really care about this. But what sets these puzzles apart, the image adhesion is spectacular. The board is thick. It's it's almost feels jewel-like when you touch it. Um, and that was really the hallmark of these vintage round spring box. And everybody loved them. Nobody could get enough of them. 
uh, round boxes. They were really, really popular, and it, it added a new level of style and sophistication to doing bustles. This is, I think, a 65. Okay, I'm going to go through a few of these so you can see them, because that's what the hell you came here to do. You see some puzzles, and why wouldn't you come here to see puzzles? <laughs> it's puzzle talk. Okay. Dig this. Salvador Dali. Springbok enlists Salvador Dali to do this great image. And it's a double, double image. It's called Apparition of the Invisible Bust of Voltaire. So the idea is it's, it's two images. It's these four people. And then if you hold it back and you squint, it looks like the bust of Voltaire. Can you see that? If you can't see that, I'm sorry, I can't see it for you. I can't do everything for you people. you got to help me along here. Uh, great little cool details in this puzzle, including, if you can see there, can you see that little right here? It's this little self-portrait of Dolly. This is a 1965 Springbok puzzle. This is what Springbok was about. This is what, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Springbok. All right. Now maybe one of my absolute favorites of all times. The uh, artist was Tadansky, born in Japan in 1935. One of the first adult puzzles I ever had. Not a kid's puzzle. Beautiful op art image by Tadansky. Uh, bought this online. And all of these, every one of these has these great descriptions on the back. So it just, they were all about... Uh, just a new level of puzzles. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a picture of a pretty bridge or some travel puzzle. Here's, I don't know, vapid, bleh. Uh, one more I'm going to show you. And here, when you look at this, it was back in um, 1967. Uh, the Lewins sold, they, 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 they started a partnership with Hallmark Cards. So that was 67, there was a shift. And I don't know when you see, okay, if you see here a Springbok, and there's the Springbok, there's the animal, okay? Uh, so you had this cursive, and you had this distinctive Springbok, the way that the font was and the animal was on there. And then it went over to Hallmark Cards, and frankly, the images and everything stayed really pretty high quality and whatnot. Excuse me, I'm, you know, I gas out so endlessly, I need to wet my whistle. Yeah. You know how much vodka's in here? You think it's a little, you think it's a lot? I'm going to tell you exactly how much vodka is in here. The amount of vodka you need, to, you need to have in here during the pandemic. Okay, it's a pandemic level of vodka. That's what's in this glass. All right, so... Then you get into the 70s, and the first thing you notice is a change in the font. I'm sorry it's backwards. I already covered that. Can you deal with it, please? I just bought this puzzle new. I think it's a 71 or 72. I bought it on eBay, and it features these grist mills, which normally would, like, you would say, that's the most boring thing in the world, Aaron. Why did you do that? Because when I saw this vintage spring, uh, spring box featuring these grist mills, I flipped my lid because I have walked the entire Ohio and Erie Canal towpath that's open, and grist mills are like a thing. They're a thing on the towpath, and if you walk the towpath, and if you are from Ohio, where I am from, grist mills were a thing, and so it's important to me to have a grist mill puzzle if it exists, especially if it's a Springbok vintage puzzle, so now I have it. I may, it was, was it $50? Probably. So what? Who cares? What else are you going to do with $50? I don't know what you're going to do. It's a pandemic. You're stuck inside. Buy, buy a grist mill puzzle. All right. I'm now going to show you a few of their rectangular puzzles through the years. Um, here's one that I just flipped for. This was a dollar at, it's called Mystical Ovoid, a study in kinetic light by Jerome Kresh. Um, and it's got the cursive, so it's fairly early. What's it look like? Uh, 1971. 500-piece puzzle, not round, but just... And they did a lot of this great op art. They did a lot of this great op art. They did classic art. Just everything that... Just images that just you want to be with for a long time. Um, a buck, two bucks, something like that, and it was complete. Woo! All right. And then there would be whimsy, okay? 
Uh, now this is a little later because it's got the more 70s style Springbok font and it's called Say Cheese. And if I open this up, it, I think it's taped up. Um, it, it's still the, these great pieces, great, the, the, the dies that they used to make these puzzles were really, every piece was unique. Um, any of it. I don't whimsy. So on, on the back of this, you know, it's a cheese puzzle. It's all this cheese. And on the back it says of mice and men. And then it it, 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 it gives like funny facts about Roquefort from France, Gorgonzola from Italy, and Brie and Camembert are considered by many cheese lovers to be the reigning monarchs of the cheese kingdom. So, you know, these are this is clearly someone that is speaking my language, man. Because they're talking about some kind of cheese on the cheese puzzle. I have not done this yet. It was a thrift store puzzle. What's the problem with this puzzle? You, if you've been watching this, you should know by now. The problem is, I'm going to want some cheese when I work this puzzle. And if I'm having some cheese, you can bet that there's going to be some kind of adult beverage going on with that. I hope I didn't... I, I, what, did I ever spill an adult beverage on a puzzle? Yes, I did. Okay? I did. It was not pretty. I took all of the pieces, I laid them out on cookie sheets, and I put them in the dehydration uh, setting on, uh, in the oven, and they dried out, and frankly, it was fine, and the puzzle was complete. It was a 2,000-piece van. I can't think of that guy's name. Whatever. It was a 2,000-piece puzzle. I spilt a, an adult beverage on it, so yeah, that did happen. If you were curious that, yeah, it happened here, it happened here. Yeah, I did it. Cheese puzzle. Okay. Um... Now, another just, like, great whimsy Springbok. Again, a little later because it's got this uh, stylized... It's called See How They Run. And it's some great thing that's showing this marathon running thing. I love that. Haven't done it yet. Another... I'll be honest. When I get see from... Uh, this one doesn't have a date, but I can... A couple of things you could tell. There's no... Uh, barcode on it that dates it to whenever it dates it to I didn't look up when they had barcodes you look it up you got the internet machine I'm tired um, and also at some point all of the puzzles everything on it was bilingual so this is not there's no bilingual descriptions there is no barcode so whatever I'm guessing 80s ish still stuff on the back an Ed Cunningham, Ed Cunningham poem that I'm not going to read because you don't want to hear it. Okay. Then we're going forward into the 80s and 90s. Um, at some point, it was 02, I think, that Hallmark made a deal with a thing called Allied Products. And I need a little fortification. Things started going uh, south. Before that, though, and I'm putting this puzzle in here. I'm doing something a little weird. I'm doing something a little crazy because I think it had to be done, and I'm going to do it. And who else is going to do it? This chick's going to do this. I'm about to show you a weird puzzle. It's an Avon Wheel of Fortune puzzle. Now, I found this at the thrift store. I bought it, and it was complete. And, okay, I know it says right there, complete 3-26-2013 EOB. This was before I started doing a lot better notes because, quite frankly, this just sucks. But that's what I was doing then. Anyhow, I did this puzzle, and, I mean, I've been doing spring box for so long. I'm like, these are spring box pieces. So what gives? I mean, Springbok, Avon, Wheel of Fortune, this just sounds like really an, 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 an unholy triumvirate. A little frightening. And all it says on the box is made in the U.S. exclusively, exclusively for Avon Products, Inc. New York. Copyright 1988. So this was before. I, can never, I could never find anything about this puzzle. What did Avon... Was it is Pat Sajak? What Vanna White? I don't know. 
what was that, that SSS Avon stuff that you're supposed to have for bug spray? I don't know. What what the hell is it? Springbok. Is it a Springbok? Isn't it? I think it is. Did Springbok make this? Did, was was they jacking? Did somebody turn letters? I don't know. I have no idea. I just have the puzzle. Puzzle is complete. Anybody know anything about this puzzle? Let me know. I'd love to hear about it. All right. Now things are going to start really uh, that was a little aside but now we're into the years of spring back where things change all right i'm going to show you two more puzzles and then i'm going to tell you what might be the saddest story you ever heard in your life okay here's a 1500 piece spring back that i bought at uh i bought this at the uh, <coughs> excuse me at the thrift store it's not bilingual, no barcode, so I'm not sure when it was. And now here you have what is essentially a current Springbok. It's got Spanish on it. There's the barcode. And it's got this, this, the here. Um, I don't know how old it is. Okay, I didn't buy that many new spring box for a while, and then some. At some point, I'm, I mean, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I subscribe to the spring box newsletter. All right, there, there, there. Okay, you didn't know that about me. Maybe you thought you knew it. Anybody could have guessed it, but I. In any event, so one day it announces that they're having an image contest. All right. So I, I'm like, I should do, I should submit an image, you know, I mean, I'm the puzzle chick, I should do this. So I start racking my brains, all right, and the, the preview, the, the teaser image you may have seen somewhere online when I announced this was one of the, as many images as you want. So I did, I don't know, I must have sent them like 12 images. Um, my mom had a set of old marionettes, that was an image. I, th I thought, well, they like hokey, homemade stuff, so I made a bunch of pot holders, and I did an image of pot holder. And then, 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 fellow earthlings, there was the candy image. And I went to a place called B.A. Sweeties, which if you live in Cleveland, you know it. It's you got to go there because it, it actually you may want to go. You may not want to go because if you go, you are not you're coming out of there. You're coming out of there with salted licorice. You're coming out of there with. Uh, Butterfingers, you're coming out of there with vintage Pop Rocks. You're just coming out of there with things that you don't want to come out of there with. But what did I come out of there with uh, back when I was doing these images was all this colorful candy. So I take, I, and, and they have every shape you can imagine. They're like sweet tart kind of hard candies. And they have little stars and little hearts. And they have all this shit that you can buy all this candy and all this color. So I buy like pounds of this candy because I'm going to do this image. And I get all the candy out, and I do these images, and and one of the images with all this candy, they give it, they put it online and say, here's one of the images we're considering. Okay, great. And uh, I told everybody, go, vote for me, whatnot. They didn't choose the image. Okay, fine. And we had all this terrible candy that was so bad that even my kid who was in the, in like ninth or 10th grade or something like that, she wouldn't eat it and none of her friends would eat it. We had to throw the candy away. Like I had, it was like $40 in candy. It was so stupid. I don't get the prize, but they say, because you had this mention, we are going to send you two free puzzles if you would like them. I said, okay, great. Yeah, I haven't had a new spring bug in a hundred years. So... I had to pay shipping. I picked two puzzles, and one of them is a, uh, it's like air balloons, and it was hard to pick the puzzles because, listen a minute, I'm not going to judge anybody for the images that they want to have on their puzzle. You, you want to have Thomas Kincaid, you want to have Americana, you want to, fine, all right? That's you and your puzzles. I'm not judging you, Okay. All Springbok has, which is a far cry from Frank Kupka and Jackson Pollock. All right, but I picked two puzzles anyway, and one's the hot air balloons and this other Americana puzzle, which I'll get to. And I'm doing the hot air balloons, and I'm like, all these hot air balloons repeat. And then I look at them closely because I do jigsaw puzzles, and details are like what I'm looking at, and it's clear that 
it's just a few, it, well, not a few, but the same balloons are repeated. So I look at that, and then I look at the other puzzle. And this is, I just get ready to be freaked out, man. Just get ready to be freaked out. So it's clear that it's just a Photoshopped repetition of some balloons. And not even a very good one. And then the other puzzle, it has, it's a collage puzzle. And it's kind of like this one. Okay, this is an old Springbok. I don't know what year it is. It's older. Now, when you look at this puzzle and you look here, you can see that this collage box is would be hanging on a wall. But the newer Springbok that I got, some of the stuff had gravity like this, so gravity would be like it was hanging on the wall, and then other boxes had it that gravity be, would be like the box was laying on the ground. And I'm like... You know, man, you're a puzzle company. If you're going to Photoshop stuff, can't you just, like, get one consistent gravity plane? You know, you got two different gravity. So I email Springbok. I'm like, uh, you know, um, we're your people. If we're not your people, who's your people? We are your people. And you got a gravity problem in this puzzle. Everything's Photoshopped. You got repeated balloons in this puzzle. And I'm, I'm like, not happy. I'm like, you know, you people used to have the best art puzzles in all the land. And they write back, yeah, you know, get and tell our art department. That, uh. The other thing is the quality of the puzzle, the quality of the die cut isn't the same. Um, go on, go on to the Springbok site and look at the images. Maybe you don't like them, but I'm somebody that saw Spring, there was a vision of Springbok. When the Lewins said, when you work this Pollock puzzle, you'll understand Jackson Pollock better. They elevated puzzles. They got it the way I got it. Um, and I never knew all this until I started researching puzzles and doing things like buying the Jigsaw Puzzle Encyclopedia History book. And so it, it makes me sad that Springbok puzzles that had this quirk, this American singularity uh, now is cottages, Thomas Kincaid style cottages and you go to the site and you take a look at those and, and see what you come away with. Um, so is there a big Springbok controversy? Probably not. It's probably just me. But um, I have watched the arc of this weird parlor craft hobby and I've watched it go from the smart, stylish, yet inexpensive thing to um, go look at the images and decide for yourself. And it went down in quality, and now it's just it's just kind of this photoshopped. Um, all right. Clearly, we cannot end Puzzle Talk on that note. So we're going to take another little detour, folks. I'm going to talk for a minute about Liberty Puzzles. And when I talk about Liberty Puzzles, I got to start here in Cleveland. I got to start in Chagrin Falls. Why do I start in Chagrin Falls? I'm going to tell you. Back in, I think, the 30s, there was a family that made these handmade jigsaw puzzles, and they were called Falls Puzzles. And they were really something special. They were so special that they did indeed garner the attention of Wait For It. King George and Queen Mary, who ordered the puzzles from Falls Puzzles because they enjoyed them so much. And they, what you would, if you ever saw a Falls Puzzle, and maybe, maybe I know somebody that actually saw a Falls Puzzle once on eBay and bid $1,100 for that puzzle and was not the successful bidder. Um, but if you ever saw a Falls Puzzle, whimsy pieces. And two gentlemen, one by the name of Christopher Worth and the other by the name of Jeffrey Eldridge were so taken by the uh, essence of the Falls Puzzles that they launched a company called Liberty Puzzles in 05 in Boulder, Colorado. I don't know how you people can stand listening to me. I need another one. Whew. Yeah, that's pandemic level of vodka. I don't know what to say. Um, I have to say something about Falls Puzzles. Um, 
yeah, I had the situation where I didn't get that $1,100 bid uh, in this lifetime. I'm going to go in some antique shop and I'm going to see a false puzzle box and I'm going to have a false puzzle in my life. Until then, I have these great Liberty puzzles, which were inspired by false puzzles. I have a few. I have one that has a Grateful Dead theme and I have another, um, I can't think of the name of the art, but you just got to trust me on that. And the one I want to show you is um, I dreamed I was a doorman at the Hotel Del Coronado. And the artist, and I didn't check today if they still have them, uh, is Dr. Seuss. Um, Dr. Seuss was a hell of a lot more than the guy behind the cat in the hat uh, and thing one and thing two. He, if you do a little research on him, you will find that uh, during World War II, he did any number of political, uh, he did a lot of political work, controversial political work, very anti-Nazi. He, he was, um, look it up. If you have the internet machine, look it up um, and learn a little bit about uh, the man behind Green Eggs and Ham. Okay, this puzzle. The Hotel Del Coronado is in San Diego. And Seuss, um, his whole name was, I always have to look it up, but you won't care if I do that. It's Theodore Seuss Geisel. Okay, the Hotel Del Coronado was, I, I'm assuming it was on the ocean, and Seuss's studio was on a... It was located on top of what was Mount Soledad. And it was in what was previously a lookout tower, maybe a fire tower, or I don't know what it was, but it was this space. And so when he was in his studio, he could see what was called, what is, the nickname is the Dell, okay? He could see the Dell, and I just... When you work this puzzle, this Liberty puzzle, and I should show you, let me, I don't even know if it's, all right, I'm going to, I can't, it, it looks like it's not sealed. Oh, you know what, I just, all right, oh wait, oh, oh, I, I wrote something in here. Okay, I have, I wrote a note, and then it says on here, this puzzle is complete, Aaron O'Brien. May 2018, and uh, it's hard to show you this, I don't want to, but when you open one of these puzzles up, it's like opening a gift, and I I'm going to show you a whimsy puzzle, a piece, a whimsy piece. Okay, here's a little funny whimsy piece. There's a little sea creature. Ooh, ooh, look at this. Here's a whimsy piece that's like a mermaid. And all the whimsy pieces in this puzzle are in the style of, of, of like a Seuss. They're Seuss-inspired. Anyhow, why do I love this puzzle so much? Well, I mean, Seuss is telling us something with the, with the title. I dreamt I was a doorman at the Hotel Del Coronado. And so as I worked that puzzle, and it's a really fanciful image, you know, I posted about it, and this dorky person goes, Gee, that doesn't really look like the Dell. I'm like, it's Dr. Seuss, you know? Look at the cat, the hat. It doesn't look like a cat either. Okay? So, no, the Dell looks like, looks like Seussified in his painting of it. So deal with it. When you construct that puzzle, you, you feel the spirit of the man that uh, we loved as kids and you feel a sense of humor, and you feel a sensitivity, and you feel, it's like you're sitting next to him on top of Mount Soledad, gazing out at the Dell, and dreaming that you were a doorman there. Yeah. You know, I, one of the lines I like to say, you know, when you wish upon a star, the magic is not in the star, the magic is in the wish. And 
all of these puzzles, and the Liberty is a little more expensive, but most of these puzzles are really kind of inexpensive. They're just, they're just inexpensive little it's a piece of cardboard with an image pasted to it, cut into a bunch of pieces until it's not. I have really enjoyed talking to all of you about these puzzles. And I hope you took something away from all of this. It's been great. I could talk forever. I got so many puzzles, but quite frankly, <laughs> I guess enough is enough. Anyhow, I want you to stay healthy. I want you to find a smile in every single day. And uh, I thank you so much for spending time with me. Um, it's Aaron O'Brien signing off, but not until I tell you that I love you. <laughs> Bye, gang. <laughs>